In this video, we'll be going over Lucy's Interplanetary Earth Gravity Assist Trojan Asteroid Encounters Trajectory. So we'll be taking a look at Lucy's trajectory in the EME-2000 or Earth-Centered Equatorial or J-2000 Inertial Reference Frame, which is on the top right, and in the Sun-Jupiter Rotating Reference Frame, which is on the top left, where we can see Lucy first visit the L4 asteroids and then use another Earth flyby to get to Patroclus at L5. And we'll also be taking a look at Lucy's velocity vector during the three Earth gravity assists with respect to Earth and with respect to the Sun to see how Lucy is gaining heliocentric velocity and energy during these flybys. And if you'd like to learn more about gravity assist trajectory design, I'll leave a link in the description to this video. Lucy will be launching tomorrow, 2021, October 16th, from Cape Canaveral, Florida, into an eccentric orbit around the sun with a period of roughly one year in order to perform the first Earth gravity assist. So on the bottom left is Lucy's velocity vector with respect to the Earth, and on the bottom right is with respect to the sun during that first Earth flyby. So with respect to the Earth, the magnitude of Lucy's velocity vector before and after the flyby is equal, but the vector is rotated. But with respect to the Sun, Lucy gains around 5 km per second, which increases the orbit semi-major axis and sets up the next Earth gravity assist a little over two years later. Here are the velocity vector plots for the second flyby, where again, with respect to Earth, the velocity vector is rotated, but with respect to the Sun, Lucy gains another roughly 4 km per second, which is enough to reach the Sun Jupiter Lagrange point 4, or L4, and do a close approach of Donald Johansson along the way. So once Lucy reaches the L4 region, there are a number of deep space trajectory correction maneuvers to properly set up the flybys. And once Lucy comes back on the last gravity assist, Lucy doesn't actually gain any heliocentric velocity, but does use the flyby for an inclination change, which saves a lot of fuel since inclination changes are very costly in terms of delta V. So here we get a good view of Patroclus' inclination with respect to the planets and why that inclination change was necessary. All of this trajectory data comes from the NAIF website in the form of BSP spice kernels. And if we take a look at this file, we can see all the information about the deep space maneuvers slash trajectory correction maneuvers and the B-plane targeting of all the flybys.